everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a little different than all the others. It's going to be a comparison, which we've done, but we're comparing coffee with photography. Is that even a thing? Let's find out. Now before we go on, I'm not going to talk about photography because I think we all know what photography is, but I do need to talk about cold brew coffee because believe it or not, not everybody knows. This is one of those things where many people kind of assume, but we don't always know what it is. Here's an example. So sometimes I'm talking about coffee and I'll ask a person a question and I'll say, have you ever had cold brew coffee? And their answer is, oh yeah, I drink cold coffee all the time. But that's not what I asked. What I asked was not how you drink your coffee, it's how you brew your coffee. See, cold brew coffee is a way of making coffee using room temperature or cold water. You know that the normal way we, we make coffee is we, we put hot water through coffee grind, right? Well, this is a little different. Cold brew uses room temperature or cold water. At the end of this video, we're actually going to make the comparison between photography and cold brew coffee, but we need to understand what cold brew coffee is because not everybody does. Once we understand what photography is, which we kind of already know, and we understand what cold brew is, then we can talk about that comparison. But that has to happen at the end because first we're going to talk about cold brew coffee. And I promise you, after this video is done, this will possibly change the way you drink coffee forever. I hope, anyway, right? That's the whole intention of this film, or video, I should say. It's a short film. Um, that you can walk away with a little more knowledge of something that, you know, we didn't know or understand before. So, here we go. So, like we said, instead of using very hot water and kind of pouring it through coffee grind, we use this as a visible method, right? Uh, on the top here is the filter, and then here's the canister that holds the, the water and the coffee, right? Uh, once the coffee grind goes in here, you pu put the water through here, and then at the bottom you get flavorful water. We call it coffee. So instead of putting hot water through coffee grind, and why might that be bad? Well, I mean, we've been doing it for many, 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 many decades, right? That's how we get the flavor of the coffee out. We put hot water through coffee grind, and at the end, we get coffee, right, that we drink. So what happens is besides getting that flavor, the hot water goes through the grind and then comes out at the bottom with the flavor of the, of the coffee, right? Besides getting the flavorful coffee, we also get some of the negative aspects of that grind, which is the acidity, high acid content. I don't know if you've realized this, but some people have told me that their stomachs get upset when they drink coffee, and it's because most likely the acidity, right? Unless they're allergic to coffee. Um, the high acid levels of coffee causes problems in people's stomach many times. So they just rule coffee out altogether. They'll go with something like a, a mild tea, right? But what if I told you that using cold brew, you can use room temperature or cold water to make coffee and you get the flavor without the acidity. Now that's something that I like to know. But can I just pump cold water through here and, and it goes through the coffee grind and then comes out at the bottom with coffee flavor? No, that's not going to work. You're going to get like a, like a dirty water with absolutely no flavor and all of the flavor is going to be stuck up here in your coffee grind which is now wet. So how do we do this? How do we get flavor out of coffee without the acidity with cold water? That's what we're going to do right now. There is a formula we're going to have to learn and it's very simple, okay? Now, I'm using Dunkin' Donuts Original Blend, medium roast. This is wonderful coffee. It's funny because, God, I love the way it smells. Coffee just smells great. Um, people say, you're either a Dunkin' drinker or a Starbucks drinker. Well, the first thing is, those are not the only two coffee shops in the world. <laughs> in the world. There are so many little coffee shops that have great coffee. Um, you just have to explore a little, right? 
and some are really into coffee making. So I, I prefer, um, you know, many mornings where, you know, I don't feel like drinking anything heavy. I prefer this. Now, there are some days that I'll go to Starbucks with my friends and, and there are a bunch of drinks I get from there as well. I like different things from different places, right? So, you know, do you have to be a Dunkin' or a Starbucks person? I'm, I'm sure there are favorites, right? I, I tend to lean more towards Dunkin' if I'm just running around and, and want a quick cup of coffee. Um, it's a wonderful coffee, okay? So we're gonna use this. So the formula is, for every pound of coffee, you're going to need nine cups of water, okay? Remember that, one pound of coffee grind or coffee bean, which if you get a bean, you have to grind it. Uh, I decided to get the grind just because I didn't want to grind a pound of coffee for the, for the video. Um, if you get a pound of coffee, you're going to need nine cups of water, okay? If it's half a pound, then it's four and a half cups of water. Now, I'm going to put a formula up on the screen for you, and you can freeze it and write it down, that will tell you, depending on how much coffee you buy, how much water you're going to need. Because I've already seen, at Dunkin', actually, I saw they were selling 16 ounces of coffee, which is one pound. This is 12 ounces. I've seen 10 ounces. I've seen 10.5 ounces. I've seen 15 ounces. I've seen every number you can think of, right? And they don't like doing the 16 ounces, which is a pound. Don't ask me why, I have no freaking clue. So I've got to give you this formula because chances are you're going to get some weird number. You're not going to get 16 ounces, which is one pound, because then that would just be nine cups of water. So here we go. This is a, t a 12 ounce bag which requires 6.75 cups of water, and um, I left half in here, and you're gonna see why I left half in here. I'll do that later. But right now, we're going to show you how to make cold brew coffee. Now we first start with coffee grind, right? And in here, I have six ounces. It doesn't matter what you, you know, if you can buy 16 ounces, which is one pound, great, then you know you're gonna need nine cups of water. So you take this coffee grind and you take anything you have that is uh, clean um, and, you know, is not going to get stained by coffee. You don't want to get like a white plastic thing because you're going to stain it. So let me move this out of the way. So you start with this, it's in the way, and we're going to take the coffee and we're going to put it in here. I want to make sure every single little grind of this coffee is in here. I don't want to waste it. Oh my gosh, what a natural high. That's delicious. <laughs> I love coffee. So now we have to add water. Now I showed you the formula, right? Assuming that this was the entire 12 ounces, I'm going to, I was going to put 6.75 uh, cups of water, but it's half of that. So it's three and three-eighths cup of water. So I'm going to get the water right now. Now, just for your information, this is filtered water. You don't have to do filtered water. Uh, are you going to get the flavor of the chlorine in there? Maybe. That's up to you. That's personal. You can buy distilled water. Whatever you use to make your coffee, if you're really a coffee nut, then you probably have like really cool ways of, you know, of I don't know, getting like rainfall out of your roof and filtering it and whatever turns you on, that's fine. This is just filtered water. I filter it here at home, okay? So this is the first cup. Now, one thing here, when I say a cup of water, cups come in different sizes. This is a cup, this is a cup, And this is a cup, and they're all different sizes. So we can't just take a random cup, fill it with water, and put it in there because it's gonna to be too diluted. It's gonna mess up the formula later on. So it has to be a measuring cup, and you want it to be eight ounces. Eight ounces is a cup, okay? So you mark it at whatever you have, right? If you don't have a marking, mark it at eight ounces. Measure something else that you know is eight ounces. Uh, this one has, and, and I've got all different measurements on here, right? So it makes it easier for me. So that was the first cup of water. Here is the second cup of water. 
And here's the third cup of water. Now I need three-eighths of a cup. I'm gonna get that right now. So what is three-eighths of a cup anyway? Well, if a cup has eight ounces, three-eighths is just three ounces. And it's measured on here. So this is what's missing. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna take something, like a spoon, and you wanna mix this. Make sure that the coffee uh, that's on top doesn't stay dry while everything is wet, okay? You wanna mix this thoroughly, make sure that everything is wet. And it's gonna look like dirt. It's gonna look like wet dirt. Um, it's not going to smell like much right now, but let me tell you something. Put a lid on this, and you wanna leave it eight to 10 hours. So what I normally do, and it doesn't matter if you go a little more, I normally do it like at 8 p.m. on Friday. I put the water into the grind in a big pot. I cover it, and the next morning around 8 or 9 a.m., so that's 12, 13 hours. There's no problem with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I take that out, and, uh, and then I continue the process. So this is the first step, okay? Nine cups of water for every pound or 16 ounces of coffee grind. Got it? Now, I hope you understand the reason why I had to break this bag up into two, into half and half. Because we're at the point now where we mix in the water and the coffee and we have to wait, you know, 10 hours, right? Well, we'd have to pause the video or you'd have to watch me dance for 10 hours or something and that's not gonna happen. So, um, what I did was I prepared a batch last night, and which was half of this bag, and I have it ready to go. So, we're going to take this and put it out of the way for a second. And then we have, and the wonderful thing about this is when you open it up, the whole house, like you can leave this open for 10 minutes and your whole home is going to smell like coffee. It's fantastic. And there's just room temperature water and coffee grind. There's like no fire involved yet. Actually, there's never any fire involved. There's no gas or electric bill to worry about here. So it's pretty muddy, and all the coffee grind is at the bottom. We're going to mix this. So using the same spoon, oh yeah, that coffee grind is like caked at the bottom. So we're gonna mix this up a little just to loosen it, and finish getting that flavor out. But that's done pretty much. Okay, the flavor is naturally has naturally been has been extracted from the coffee grind. That's my bird. I'm sorry. Um, the flavor has been extracted from the coffee grind just by time with room temperature water, which is what I put in there yesterday. So the next step is to get this filtered, right? And that's why I have this little thing here. Now. You can use whatever is practical. To be honest with you, I'm doing this for the video so you can see, but this is not the method I use when I do a big pot. When I use 16 ounces of coffee and nine cups of water, I need a bigger pot than this, right? And what I do is I put it into another big pot when I'm done, and you can use anything for a filter, anything that filters coffee grind. Like, I, I've taken two terry cloth towels and wrapped them over the top uh, of the pot and then put the coffee grind on that, the flavor comes out at the bottom and the coffee grind stays at the top. So I don't know if this is gonna make a mess or not, but I'm gonna give it a try, okay? Now, you know what I wanna do? I don't wanna dirty this filter too much because we're gonna be doing this over and over and I don't wanna be washing. So I'd rather just dirty one of these paper filters and, and then I could just throw it in the garbage, you know? And then keep going and keep going and keep going until we're done. So let me turn this around because it seems like this might be a little easier. I'm, I may possibly make a mess here, okay? Get this out of the way. Now you see what this is looking like. The coffee was in the water for like 12 hours, right? So the flavor was naturally extracted and it was sitting in that pot 
ready to go. All I'm doing here is making sure that the coffee grind stays at the top and the coffee water comes down to the bottom. I'm going to let this run for a little while and you don't have to sit here and watch. I'll come back when it's done. By the way, in case you're wondering, this is not going to be drinkable because it's way too concentrated. So that's the reason I mentioned one pound of coffee grind or 16 ounces and nine cups of water because when you're done with this, the amount of water left at the bottom with the flavor of coffee that you can drink is very, is very concentrated. So what you're going to have to do is dilute it. Some people will dilute one part of this. So let's say you take a shot glass out and you put it into your cup, right? One shot glass of this and then three parts of water. So three shot glasses of water. Some people like it strong. They'll do one like shot glass measurement of coffee in their cup and then they'll do two shot glasses of water, right? Um, to, for, with, with me, it depends on the mood. It depends how I feel that day. I don't always like the same concentration. Sometimes, sometimes I like it lighter. So I may do one shot glass of this really concentrated coffee juice, and then I'll do, you know, I've done four shot glasses of water because this is really thick. I want you to know, uh, you can try drinking this. It's going to be more like a Turkish coffee if you drink it like this, which there's nothing wrong with. I actually love Turkish coffee, but it kicks my butt. I mean, I'm wired for like six hours after drinking just the smallest little cup of Turkish coffee. Cuban coffee is another example, right? So you can mix it to your level. This is where you get to experiment and you get to try your own thing. So take a little shot glass or anything you like and, you know, serve yourself some of this coffee, put it into a cup, right? And then try one shot glass of water and then you can heat this up in the microwave you can heat it up on your stove top you can heat it up wherever you want at that point the flavor has been extracted from the grind without the acidity the acidity stays in this grind which is going in the garbage right so you can heat this up however you want right i just heat it in the microwave so i put one shot glass of grind of, of coffee juice sorry in here and about two or three uh, of water depending on what I want that day. So just experiment. Do one of water and taste it. Do two of water. Taste it. Do three of water. Taste it and see what your number is. You're going to come up with a really nice number that makes you happy. And the coolest thing, like I mentioned before, you may never go back. I'm going to, I'm going to put a link down below to this thing. Uh, this is wonderful. I got it on Amazon and you know I'm an Amazon affiliate. So if you buy it from my link, I get a little something which is helpful for the channel because I can continue to buy stuff like this to make cool videos. But you don't pay a penny extra. You pay the exact same price, okay? So check it out. If you like it, buy yourself one because it makes this really easy. And the cool thing is, you know, if you're not going to make a lot of quantity, for this bag, this is perfect, right? So um, you can make yourself one depending on how much coffee you drink. What you do with this is you store it in the refrigerator. Once this is done, you put it in the fridge. That's it. It'll store safely for about a week. Um, so you make it on a Saturday morning till next Saturday morning. You have all the time in the world to drink that coffee you made. Uh, if you have a family, it'll go probably before then. If you're alone, you might even want to freeze a little bit of it. If you're not going to, you know, it's going to take you longer. Why not, right? Put half in the fridge, half in the freezer, and then take the other half out later the following weekend. And that way you don't have to be making this all the time. But you see how slow this is. It's, you know, it's trickling down very slowly. Um, I move it around. You can put a spoon in here and move it around, get some of that grind out of the way so the, the coffee comes out a little faster. But this one, I'm gonna have to move it into another filter, probably paper filter, because it is saturated. Let me do that now. One other thing I wanna mention, Peter McKinnon, if you don't follow him already, check him out, he's really cool. He's a great photographer, great videographer. Uh, great personality. Um, I rely so much on him just sometimes just to get me through the day because I love watching him. He's great energy about him. Uh, he made a video on just making a cup of coffee. He's got something similar to this and he, he was using hot water, which is fine. That's how we all make our coffee. I even have a, a pot back there, which I use for, you know, quick emergencies. Um, he made this video, which is totally artistic of himself making coffee. And if you can watch that video, if you're a coffee drinker and you can watch that video and not run 
to get a cup of coffee, then something's wrong with you because every time I watch that video, I have to make myself a cup of coffee. It's an amazing video. This is nothing like it. This is completely, you know, not artistic. And I apologize for that. This is just a how to. Uh, I want to show you how to make a cold brew coffee. Um, but watch his video. It's, it's a beautiful video. I'll, I'll put a link down below uh, in the description of the Peter McKinnon coffee video. Okay, so look for that. And don't take it from me because I'm Colombian. I was born in Colombia that, you know, this is good coffee. This actually was taught to me by an American, uh, somebody that lived in California. I was on a business trip and he said, what do you mean you're Colombian and you've never heard of cold brew? Now this was over 20 years ago when the cold brew thing wasn't popular. Now people hear cold brew, like I mentioned earlier, and they just think it's cold coffee, right? Cold brew is not cold coffee. Now you can take a little shot glass of this, serve it in your cup, and then take two shot glasses of cold water. You don't have to heat it up. And then you can drink it that way. Yes, that's cold coffee. You can drink this cold and you can drink it hot. You can heat it up in the microwave. Um, but that's not what makes it cold brew. What makes it cold brew is the method that we just went through on making it, right? You use I used cold water because it was in the fridge, but yesterday when I made the first batch, it was actually room temperature water. The filter hadn't been put in the fridge yet. So um, it doesn't matter what you use because the water is going to reach room temperature within an hour or two. And then the rest of the eight or nine hours that is sitting out there, it's just going to work magically. The flavor is going to get extracted from the grind slowly, slowly. And that acid stays behind in the grind and you never have to drink that. It goes in the garbage, okay? Now, I'm going to continue to let this go a little further, but the truth is we don't have to continue to let it go. I'm actually going to let this filter finish. Uh, this is the second filter. I'm going to throw it in the garbage and we're going to have our first cup of coffee. I paused the process for now because it does take a little while. Like I said, if you want to use a cloth instead over a big pot and then just pour your whole, you know, gooky, uh, controlled substance <laughs> in that and just let the water come out quicker. That's that's easier. These coffee filters and even this one, you have to start, you have to wash it all the time. And these I just throw out. But I, you know, you can I can go through for this mix that I did here, just one of these pots. I can go through five of these. Oh, they're cheap anyway, right? But um, I'm going to stop here. So I'm going to take this off. And this is what the coffee looks like. Now, like I said, this is really, really concentrated. OK, you know, but it still smells delicious. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to grab a cup, right? This is my daughter's design here on this cup. She's a little artist, loves to draw. So <clears throat> we got this cup as a gift. Anyway, I'm going to serve myself one shot. And this is just for measurement. And it could be kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be scientific. You don't have to put it on a nuclear scale or anything. One shot of this coffee, okay? And I'm going to start with two shots of water. Here is the first shot of water. And this too, by the way, if you're going to filter the water you use to make your coffee, you should also use filtered water for, for drinking it when you're mixing it, you know, the final stage. This still looks really, really dark. I mean, I know you can't see it, but this is, this is really dark. Let me, let me add at least two more. This is now the second shot glass of water. And yes, it's still really dark. This is the third shot of water. Now this is probably how some people are gonna drink it. Although, wow, that is still too dark. I'm doing four. You might do this at home and stop at two and then call me a wuss. <laughs> I'm okay with that, by the way. <laughs> it's not gonna affect me. You know what the cool thing is? You can always add more water. So I'm going to start with this and I'm going to heat it up in the microwave. One second. Actually, you can hear it. That microwave up there behind me doesn't work. It just broke. This is ready. That still looks really, really dark. But let's try it out. That was four, 
four uh, shot glasses of water for one shot glass of coffee goop. Um, some of you like your coffee straight up, that's fine. I know some people add a little sugar, some people don't add sugar, they just add a little cream. Some people don't add cream, they add cream and sugar. It just depends, right? I am in the mood right now for a lot of sugar. And I'm in the mood for some half and half. Ooh, look at that, it even fizzes. Regular coffee doesn't ever do that. Oh my, that looks wonderful. Mm. Let me get a different little spoon to mix it. Wow, this looks really nice. And I've had this many times before. The flavor is just unparalleled. It may need more sugar, by the way. That's the kind of person I am. Don't hate me. Oh my gosh. You're going to find something when you make this coffee before even putting any sugar in. Like if you're a, if you drink it with sugar, don't put any sugar in. Just put your cream, whatever you do. You know, if you add cream, if you don't add cream, whatever it is, don't put any sugar in it. Taste it first. You're going to find, because you made it with cold water, that it's naturally sweet. That's what I forgot to tell you at the beginning. It's when you put hot water through coffee and you pull out the flavor with the acid, it takes the sweetness away. This is naturally sweet. I normally put three of these little flat spoons of sugar. I only did two because I didn't make it with hot water. I made it cold brew this time and it's perfect. It's amazing how smooth this tastes. I mean, oh my gosh. I hope, I really, really hope you make this at home. Please make it at least once and, and comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you're totally blown away like I was the first time I made it, please let me know because it means a lot to me. Oh my gosh, that is so good. <laughs> so it is 7 o'clock p.m. And if I have coffee anytime after 5, I can't sleep. So I'm screwing myself. But this is just too good to put down. Um, now you know what cold brew is. Cold brew is making coffee with room temperature or cold water so you can extract the flavor without the acid. We know what photography is. So what the heck does photography and cold brew have in common? What is, what is the comparison we can draw here? Well, I thought of two things, and this is four, by the way, so it's just one hand. <laughs> two things I thought of. The first one is nomenclature, or just words in general, right? Uh, identification, whatever you want to call it. We have so many names in our field. If it's photography, if it's art, if it's sculpting, if it's plumbing, if it's electric, you know, electrician, electricity. We have all these things that we say, that we use, that words that we throw around. And many times we just take it for granted and we assume everybody else that's in that field knows it. Sometimes we may not even know it and we throw it around, right? That's the first thing I want to mention. Just like we realized with cold brew coffee that I can guarantee you more than half of the people that I ask don't know what it is. They think it's drinking cold coffee. The same thing happens in photography. When you're holding a camera and you start going into things, I've talked to people and I've asked them if they shoot manual and they tell me, yes, I do. And I go, so, you know, what are your favorite settings? Any favorite settings you have? And they'll say something like, well, I put it in raw, right? And then I put it in auto and, um, and that's manual to them. They didn't realize manual is actually putting it on the M, on the dial, right? Everybody's got different ideas. So all I'm trying to say to you photographers that follow me and, and the ones that are new watching this, if you're going to do photography and you're going to take it seriously, whether it's a hobby or a, you know just your passion or you're going to start getting into it as a job and you want to make money, you've got to understand everything there is to know about photography. Cameras have a thousand freaking settings. You need to open that manual. You need to sit there and you need to go through it. And when it comes to something and you don't know what it is and it's telling you, you know, pick this for mode A and pick this for mode B, and you have no idea what the hell white balance is, check it out of the computer. Look up, and I didn't mean to say hell, I'm sorry. I meant to say heck. I'm speaking too fast. So if you don't know what the heck white balance is, um, just check it out, right? 
Search up white balance. Oh, it's the color of temperature of uh, light. It's the color of light. It's the color temperature of light uh, measured in, de in degrees Kelvin. So light can be either whitish or yellowish or reddish, right? That's white balance. So now you know how to adjust it and you know what white balance is. Become familiar with all the terms of your trade. That's my point. If you are a coffee fanatic, and you should already know what cold brew is, and you probably already did, right? Um, so that's my point, point one. Point number two, there's a process that we have to follow. You saw how we did the cold brew, right? You took the coffee grind and you put it in the pot first. Then you put the right amount of water in there. Then you let it sit for the right amount of time. Then you put it through this device and you separated the grind from the flavor. Then you had to add some water to dilute it. Now you're gonna take this mixture and you're gonna stick it in the fridge and it's good for a solid week or maybe a little more and you can just pull out whatever you need during the week. Oh my God, that is so cool. Um, there's a process. Photography has a process as well. People like taking shortcuts. We all do. Some people take shortcuts when they learn martial arts. They don't want to do the basics because the basics are boring. They look at movies and they see all the fancy stuff and that's what they want to do, right? So they jump into that without even understanding the basics. There's a flow. You've got to start at the beginning. You've got to work your way to the middle and then you can get to the dessert, right? As my instructor says, my Kung Fu instructor. He says, uh, you know, we all always want to go straight to the dessert and you got to eat your meal first and then you go to the dessert, right? Uh, and it starts with the, with the appetizer. So same, photography has got a process, right? Learn the process from taking your pictures, whether you shoot in RAW or JPEG, downloading them, editing them, whichever software you use, printing them, right? Printing them. I released a video on the importance of printing your pictures. I'm going to link it here in this video. Please watch it because we're all missing out by not printing our pictures. So those are the two comparisons between cold brew coffee and our lovely photography. If you found this video interesting, useful, if you loved it, um, please give me a like down below, right? On your left, a uh, little thumbs up. And if you know somebody, I hope you do, that loves coffee, that enjoys coffee, um, you know, that's, that gets really excited about trying different coffee brands, uh, please send this to them. They're going to really, really enjoy this. I want, I want to spread the word. Everybody should know how to make this. This is fantastic coffee. It doesn't taste like anything that we make with hot water, unfortunately. But the hot water gets me out of binds because I don't always have the time to make this. And sometimes it'll, it'll be weeks that I don't make it and I'm just making coffee with hot water. And you know, I put a little sugar in it, a little milk, and it tastes fantastic. But it doesn't taste like this. And if you're not a member already, please subscribe down to your right and hit the little notification bell, hit all, because then my videos will come to you as I release them and you'll see other cool things. I'm going to compare photography, and I point over there because there's another camera, you know, the one that's shooting the close-ups. Um, I'm going to compare photography with so many other things because I just think of these things like while I'm at work and while I'm, you know, in bed getting ready to sleep, when I wake up in the morning, when I'm showering, these things just pop into my head. The similarity between photography and laundry. Really? Yes, I'm going to do that video too. So as usual, I hope you found this, you know, at least enjoyable and uh, definitely educational. I hope it is. Uh, love you guys from the bottom of my heart. And until the next video, Ciao for now.